I'm Old Big Len, this is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, we're now well into fall here. Uh, time for a market update here for fall 2022. Um, now as I speak, I think this might come to a surprise as some people, not all, uh, but the market right now is holding up extremely well. Uh, I'm gonna call a couple of things here. There really is nothing for sale right now, and it's almost getting wor worrisome here. Um, at this point in the fall, we should start to see inventory starting to come up pretty dramatically here. People starting to list homes. This is our busiest time of the year. This in our spring market. So, you know, back earlier this summer, I said inventory is extremely low, but that's not too surprising. Nothing really gets listed in the last half of July and August. Realtors like myself are on vacation and realtors make things happen. When they're not around or on vacation, things don't happen. It's just the bottom line. The other thing is sellers are on vacation, buyers are on vacation, the weather's nice, kids are out of school. So what I do in that situation is I occasionally will list some new listings in the summer and I did this past summer, not that much. You know, I work with a, a lot of, uh, I work with several large trustees. So when they're ready to list, we list. We don't time the market or when we want to list it. Normally I would say wait till after Labor Day, but when they're ready to list, I've got to list it. Or a state sale or things like that, we list it when, when the time comes. But for a lot of my sellers that were wanted to list or were thinking about selling uh, this summer, I generally tell them wait till after Labor Day. You know, the market, you know, takes a real slowdown during the dog days of summer. Wait till after Labor Day, the kickoff of our fall season, and we'll list it in September. And that's what I did last month. I had three listings that I put out in September, and I can tell you all three, there were good quality one beds, two in Vancouver, one in Richmond, all three went into multiple offers and sold over asking price. The one in Richmond, new record price per square foot for that strata, and the ones in Vancouver pretty close to it. So that's the, the power of these good quality one beds. As I've said before, they're almost bulletproof. Good quality one beds, priced under, let's call it 700 in Vancouver and under 600, 650 in Richmond. You know, the demand for that far outstrips the supply. Now, there are dog units out there that I often talk about that are in poor stratas, bad locations, hugging up on bridges. That's a little different market. Still favoring sellers, but not the crazy bidding wars and selling over asking like the three that I just sold. But it's really a bit of a Mexican standoff right now. How many times have I used that term over the years? A Mexican standoff where interest rates have been going up and for sure, as the interest rates go up, it's a cold bucket of water on prices. But those prices haven't come down that much because there's nothing for sale. Have a look, go on to the MLS, it, you know, and you have to decipher between quality and okay stuff. You know, you could probably, if you search all of downtown, Mount Pleasant, Kitsilano, probably come up with about 280, 301 bedrooms. But I can tell you that I'm probably only interested in about 10 that are in the high quality stratas, they're priced right, that we're probably gonna go after. For me anyways, and my buyers. So you have to dif differentiate between, between the two, the good stuff, the okay stuff, and the real high quality stuff. But there's still very little for sale in that one bedroom market. You know, good quality two bedrooms are pretty rare. The detached market and townhouse market is still well below our 10 year average for inventory. As I speak, I was expecting to see inventory starting to, to move up here and we haven't seen it yet. Maybe we will as we move into late October, November here, but you know, by the time we get into early December, again, we slow down again for the Christmas holidays into mid-January. We don't list at that time. So right now, again, it's a bit of a standoff here, low inventory. You know, there was some activity here earlier this uh, late uh, summer, early fall, because there were some people that had rate locks. So in other words, they had locked in a 90 or 100 day rate. Those are now pretty much all expired. So you know, we had some pretty hot action here actually in September uh, on some of the sales I had, probably because a lot of these people had these rate locks in at better rates. Those are probably all now expiring. So they're having to renew at today's rate, which you know, if you're looking at a four year fixed, with the stress test, I think is probably pushing around 7.2%, which is crazy. That's getting up there. But again, the inventory is keeping things at bay right now. We need that inventory to come up before we're really going to see a lot of uh, price drops here, especially on condos. 
Now, if you're interested in a luxury condo in Coal Harbor at four or five million dollars, that market is definitely softening, or a luxury detached house at four or five million dollars. Inventory there, there are some homes out there, I see them. They've been sitting on the market. I'm starting to see some price reductions. But Strata, good condos under a million dollars, not a whole lot of inventory. I want to point out a couple of other things here that substantiates what I'm saying here. In Canada here, this is from the September 16th uh, financial, po uh, financial Post. Canada's housing market isn't melting down as you've been led to think. Yeah, it's not. And it goes on to talk about inventory. Inventory is staying low. Maybe we had some buyers that had rental or uh, uh, rate locks there. But, you know, there's just not a whole lot of inventory and there's still more buyers than there are sellers. So it's keeping the prices at bay here for now. They're not really going down. A um, couple other ones. Wall Street Journal. This one is from September 19th. In a slowing housing market, sellers ask why list a home when you can collect rent? And uh, we're getting that same thing here in Vancouver. If they can't sell it or can't get the price I want, then I'll put a tenant in it. People are holding firm to what they've got here and they've been doing that for a long time here in Vancouver. I've been doing many blogs on this. A lot of it had to do with the stress test. A lot of people wanted to move up market from a two bed to a duplex or to a town home or from a town home to a detached home. But with that stress test, you know, you're going to get 5% on a five year fixed, but you've got to qualify at seven with the stress test. Another article here from last week's Wall Street Journal, after years of low mortgage rates, home sellers are scarce. Homeowners wearing the golden handcuffs of low mortgage costs are reluctant to sell their homes now that rates are much higher. Well, in the States, of course, they have 25-year fixed and 30-year fixed mortgages. So there was people earlier this year in the U.S. that were locking in 2.8% for 25 years. Can you imagine 2.8% uh, for 25-year fixed? These people are never going to sell these homes. Because why would they? They've got to go and requalify at 6% now. So in Canada, we don't have that luxury. We can lock in mostly one to five years here. But you know, I'm fortunate with my mortgage situation. I only have one variable rate mortgage right now, and it's a small one. And yeah, my rates have been going up and, and uh, my payment's staying the same, but I'm not chipping off very much principal right now. That's for sure. Not as much as I was earlier in the year. My rest of the ones, I was kind of lucky. It was just pure luck. I had a bunch of mortgages that came up for renewal early this year and late last year that I locked in for three to five year fixed term rates because I knew rates were going to be going up and I'm sitting pretty on those for another uh, two, uh, three to four years. I do have one mortgage coming up late spring 2023 and I'll talk to my mortgage broker because I rely on my mortgage broker for this. I've got an experienced guy who knows a lot more about where rates are headed and, and, and does a lot more research into this on me. But I'm probably just gonna lock in for a one year fixed, perhaps two years if, he, if that's what he thinks I should go. Because I'm definitely not locking in for five. Because if you read the uh, commentary these days and with economists, many of them are predicting that by the late 2023, don't be surprised if this rate tightening uh, is, is uh, removed. And we're talking about some rate decreases in another year or tw uh, 12 or 13 months. So for me, I think I'm probably, I'll take the advice of my mortgage guy, but I'll probably just lock in a one year fixed, perhaps two. You guys should be talking to your mortgage people there because people ask me where are rates going and all this other stuff, I don't know. Uh, I, I use the advice, and nobody really knows for certain, I use take the advice of my mortgage professionals. But I think if I had to bet dollars to donuts here for, for what I'm reading, is that we're in for two or three more quarter point increases here. And then don't be surprised by summer 2023, that starts to get a little more dovish as opposed to hawkish. And maybe we start to see a few quarter point decreases. So again, consult your mortgage professional on where you think interest rates are going. But for sure, we've had a very severe increase here. My variable rate, I think, went from about two, uh, not even that, I think it went from about uh, 1.9 here. Uh, and now I think I'm sitting at about uh, 4.2, <laughs> dramatic. And I've still got a couple more quarter point hikes probably to come, maybe three. But the market isn't 
melting down like some people in the media on Twitter would tell you. We'll see where it goes. We've got some more interest rate hikes. These rate locks that people were enjoying later in this summer are gone now. They're having to renew now at our current rates. It's all going to be about inventory. Uh, you know, the one bedroom market, though, I tell you, for good quality one beds in Vancouver, Richmond, Burnaby, almost bulletproof, folks. The demand far outstrips the supply. Uh, you know, in the last 20 years, I can only think of a few short periods of time where it ever went into a buyer's market, and that was short lived. There's only been a few times where it's gone balanced, mostly it favors sellers. That one bedroom, good quality condo market is still well into seller territory. I know firsthand, I just had three multiple offer bidding wars all selling over ask. Oh, and I should point out, two of the three were subject free. So there's a lot of buyers out for those. As you get up into the higher price points, it softens a little bit. It's more into balanced territory, not a seller's market. And then as you get into the detached market, as I told you guys last month, that's now into buyer's territory, just barely. But the inventory will tell the story here. For right now, I'm surprised. Here we are well into fall here now, and the inventory has just not come up all that much at all. We are, people are holding tight. It's a Mexican standoff. They're not, they're not gonna sell. And again, the reason for that too, as I've often said here, people always seem to think that Vancouver homeowners here are all leveraged to the hilt. They're not. You know, so many people have homes here in, in the Lower Mainland, clear title, no mortgage, or they have 40, 50, 60% equity to loan on it. Um, and again, if you're buying in Vancouver, which is my main market, most people here are using conventional mortgages. I know you have 20% down or more. And if you're an investor, you've got to put 20 or 25% down. So they're pretty well covered here. And it shows here because delinquency rates and people falling more than three, week, three months behind on their mortgage payments is still non-existent here. It's incredibly low. But things can change. I'm just giving you the story as of now, fall 2022. Market's holding up pretty well because there's no inventory. I'm Owen Bigland. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.